Coming up on Mustang News, Kai Omega hosted its 8th annual Kai Casino this past Saturday in Chumash Auditorium. Find out what went into the big event. Three Cal Poly students could be off to Europe without their wallets or phones. Find out, find out how they'll make it. And a fraternity is raising money for Big Brothers Big Sisters. Find out how next. Broadcasting from Studio 300 on Cal Poly's campus, you're watching Mustang News. Thank you for joining us here today for this 30-minute edition of Mustang News. I'm Giovanni Jimenez Garcia. And I'm David Klein. Mustang News start now. Kyle Casino is an annual event hosted by Cal Poly sorority Kai Omega. The benefits support the, uh, the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Kevin Schindler and I attended the event to see what it was all about. Kai Omega hosted their 8th annual Kyle Casino last weekend in Chumash Auditorium. The event is used to raise money for the local Make-A-Wish Foundation to grant wishes to children with life-threatening illnesses. Kai Omega President Taylor Karst details how the guests participate during the event. Uh, the guests will come in and play the different games and then they can make donations to get chips and then they can turn their chips in for baskets and they can get baskets that are raffled off at the end of the night. In the event where all Kai Omega sisters participated, whether that be dealing, dispensing chips, or serving refreshments, months of preparation went into this year's Kai Casino, according to philanthropy chair Ivy Dunn. So we've been planning this event for about nine months. Um, a lot of it, like the majority of the planning happened in the last few months, but in like July, August, we had to order the casino tables. We had to make sure the venue was okay. One of the cooler aspects about Kai Omega's partnership with the Make-A-Wish Foundation is they get to interact with the kids they are helping grant wishes for. We get to actually go to the wish granting parties where we get to we get to dress up as princesses sometimes and read to the child what their wish is. So we're expecting a huge turnout. We're trying to make more than we did last year. Uh, last year we raised about $41,000 from the Make-A-Wish Foundation and we're trying to exceed that this year and I definitely think we can do that for sure. A big turnout indeed, as about 1,500 people attended the event inside Chumash Auditorium, and Kai Omega has already raised a total of $38,500 as they continue to accept donations for the next week or so. David Klein and Kevin Schindler, Mustang News. Wishes for the Make-A-Wish Foundation, uh, children with the money they earned this year. Three Cal Poly students could be off on a trip of a lifetime thanks to Red Bull. Over 3,000 people voted for Brian Dennis, Andrew Jess, and Carl Wilkie, or as they're better known, Team Cali Crush, to compete in the Red Bull Can You Make It adventure. Red Bull will take away their wallets and cell phones, so they'll have to bargain their way across Europe using only 24 cans of Red Bull. The team says, says that they put about 40 hours of work into their campaign, and they'll go the extra mile for a vote. She's like, well, why should, why should I vote for you? And I'm like, well, I can, I can do anything. I'll do anything for the footage. <laughs> and she's like, all right, do a little dance. So I did a little dance. Um, and she's like, all right, I'll vote for you. The determined team campaigned all over social media, network, networked with other students in the library, visited fraternities and sororities, and even made a Tinder account. Although voting is now closed, the team feels the support from across campus. On March 7th, the three Mustangs will find out whether or not they'll be on a plane to Europe this work. April. The sixth annual sorority Best Dance Crew competition is tonight at Chumash Auditorium. Amanda Fridley spoke with some of the competitors to see how they are preparing. Said like we agree. The fraternity Theta Chi is putting on their sixth annual Sorority's Best Dance Crew event tonight, a chance for sorority members of different experience levels to come together for some healthy competition. We have dancers in our piece leads that have been dancing since they were two, and then we also have a few girls that have never taken a dance class before, that are just naturally like athletic or gifted. So we tried to choreograph to meet everyone's needs and make a look good on everyone. And it's been a really fun experience to showcase everyone's talents and kind of uncover them as we go along. And so hoping that we can just like throw in, you know, special talents that everyone has and like really showcase what we can do as a team as, as a whole. But the girls aren't the only ones to have fun. Even the guys have a chance to get in on the action. 
it's like each team is assigned two to three coaches um, who are guys who are in the fraternity um, and it's up to the coaches how involved they want to get I mean normally the guys want to have some little part in the routine whether it's comedic whether it's like you know actually having like a little choreographic um, piece so it's it's really kind of up to the guys this dance competition is Theta Chi's philanthropy event, and all proceeds made tonight will be donated towards Big Brothers Big Sisters. Getting to know some of the girls that I wouldn't normally get a chance to interact with because we now have 250 members total in our sorority, and it's hard to have close relationships with all those people if you don't, um, you know, go to all the events or stuff like that. You know, being a senior, I get pretty busy. Um, so I think my favorite part is definitely getting to know some of the girls that I, I wouldn't normally get a chance. Competitors say it's a great chance to have some healthy competition for a good cause. I've always loved dancing and being on stage and being able to like do that with my sorority and like with all my friends is really awesome and to like support an amazing cause is also really cool. Amanda Fridley, Mustang News. The event starts at 7 and tickets are still available for the competition tonight for $10 at Chumash Auditorium. Students may not have to worry about the seven-day parking after the ASI board voted to oppose the parking proposal last night. At the board meeting last night, members unanimously passed a resolution against charging students for parking on Saturdays and Sundays. Currently, parking permits are only required Monday through Friday. ASI board members found that a seven-day enforcement would affect close to 6,000 students who go to the library every weekend. The chief of the board says members worked for close to six weeks to come up with a resolution. We agree that the fact finding and the consultation and the due diligence wasn't there. Um, so that's why they decided to postpone the decision, which is great because it really means that they're listening to us as students and, and the faculty. Um, so I'm really excited. I'm really excited to work with the parking consultant and I don't know, find a solution that works for everyone. The decision to enforce the seven-day parking fees have been postponed indefinitely with a vote and the parking consultants will be meeting with board members next quarter to discuss other ways to fix the parking problem on campus. Coming up after the break, Salem Municipal County ranked among top ten of happiest and healthiest in the U.S. And the Industrial and Manufacturing Engineering Department held a 5K run. Discover why after the break. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. My new mom and I have a lot in common. <sighs> the great outside. We both love the outdoors. It's so shiny. That's not a flower. We both love geology. Oh, look. An igneous one. That's not a rock. And she knows a lot about wildlife. <gasps> a labradoodle. <gasps> That's not a dog. Hanging out has been kind of fun. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Look at me. Hey. Raymond, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. <gasps> Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Ten happiest and healthiest places in the country. Mustang News reporter Aiden Matthews has a story. San Luis Obispo County has been ranked 10th in resident happiness and health by the Gallup Healthways Wellbeing Index. 
The Wellbeing Index is a survey that measures how residents rate their sense of purpose, financial security, sense of community, and physical health. Slow County scored toward the top amongst the U.S. in community and social well-being categories. I love the people here because uh, they're very polite and and uh, you always see people you know, like when you're downtown at Farmer's Market, you always run into old friends. Kevin Habrun is a third-year history major at Cal Poly. He says he is most taken by the small community atmosphere the San Luis Obispo residents have to offer. They always love talking to you and catching up and they care about how you're doing and um, often there's plans made to spend time with each other in the future. Habrun's roommate, Shiko Casillas, is a third year anthropology major at Cal Poly. He spent fall quarter studying abroad, but still missed some aspects unique to Slow County. I miss like the beach and the sunshine and being able to hang out with my friends outside and either play sports, go to the pool, go to the beach, and I don't know, do things that I couldn't do while I was in Prague. The unique community-driven social life of the county's farmers markets and the relaxation of its warm beaches are only a couple of things that help make Slow County residents report feeling the happiest and the healthiest in the nation. Aiden Matthews, Mustang News. The well-being index was conducted by over-the-phone interviews with more than 246,000 U.S. residents. This past Saturday, the Industrial Manufacturing and Engineering Department hosted a 5K and a 10K run. The event started at 7.30 a.m. at Cal Poly's Rodeo Arena. The fun run unofficially called the happiest run on earth supported CASA or the court appointed special advocates charity for children refreshments and water were provided as well as stretching activities for the runners. The Mustang band made an appearance as well as one of Cal Poly's acapella groups, that's the key. Core organizers Kim Walter had more, had more to say about the run and its route. Eighth annual Move to Build Run, but we're calling it instead of Move to Build the IME. 5K, 10K fun run. It's really pretty. It's like a gorgeous run. You can see Madonna and bishops like you can now, so it's really gorgeous. And it's a lot of farm, like through the farm unit area. Although the run was Disney themed, the organizers wanted to make sure uh, it was known they did not have the rights to such a brand. About 300 people showed up for the run, split pretty evenly between the two distances. Coming up after the break, we have Peter Gonzalez with the week's weather. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Look at me. Hey. Raymond, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Ooh. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Taking care of a family member can lead to plenty of questions. Fortunately, there's a place to get the answers for them and for you. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. I'm Peter Gonzalez with your weather. Let's take a look at the beaches to start off. So if we look over there in Cayucas, we have a 65 with a low of 51. Morro Bay has a 66 high with a low of 52. 
Avila Beach has 66 degrees as their high and also a low of 51. Pismo Beach is a little bit warmer with 69 as the high and a low of 52. Oceano is 67 with a low of 52. North County, let's take a look. Paso Robles has a high of 73. That's probably going to be the warmest it's going to be during the North County. Atascadero has a high of 70 with a low of 47. Creston is over there with 69 and a low of 46. Santa Margarita has 70 as their high with a low of 47. San Luis Obispo will be experiencing 66 as your high and a low of 52. South County, we see that Arroyo Grande is going to have a high of 68 and a low of 52. Guadalupe is going to be a little bit colder with 66 and a low of 52. Napomo is also going to see 60 degrees as their, 66 degrees as their high and a low of 50. Santa Maria is going to be 65 with 51 as the low. Orchid is going to be 65 as a high and 50 as their low. And Vandenberg is going to be at 61 degrees for their high and a low of 50. If we take a look at the five-day forecast, it's probably going to be the warmest. It's going to be at 66 today with a hot, well, it's going to be a little bit cloudy. We're going to see more clouds coming in. And then over the weekend, we're obviously going to see rain coming in. On Friday, we have a high of 69 with a low of 56. And we can expect those showers to go all the way through Monday. Saturday is going to be a little bit colder with 63 as your high. And then 52 will be the low. Sunday is going to be 60 degrees, so be sure and have that umbrella and that coat. It's going to be a low of 48. And then Monday, things are going to start to ease up a little bit on the rain with a high of 58 and a low of 44. And that's it with me for the weather. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you very much, Peter. Now we turn to politics. Reporter Daniel Park was in the studio earlier today to interview Jeff Oceans, a congressional candidate for the 24th District. In a wide-ranging interview, Jeff Oceans talks about his positions as he runs against eight others for the 24th Congressional District. First, we talked about student debt, or as he called it, college debt. Why is student uh, college debt so important to you? And why do you think it's such an important issue for people? Uh, what I discovered was is that this was a problem not only was obviously it was affecting the individuals who were saddled with this debt, but it was a, it was a huge problem for the whole economy. Right. Because there's a whole generation of people who are, don't have the opportunities when they come out of school to explore careers, to start businesses because they're saddled with this debt. And if they don't start paying it back, then the interest starts accumulating on it. And it, it's just a detriment to the whole economy. The conversation then turned to political polarization in Washington and how Oceans would fix the problems facing him in Congress if he won. You're running as a Democrat. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to compromise with Republicans on any issue, not just education? Yeah, I mean, that's how it works. You don't go into Congress or into a legislative battle. You come in with one position, and, and you, you, you try and get as much of that position as you can. I mean, I'm, when I worked up there, we passed laws. I also asked him about a particular statement he made during the debate at Cal Poly. He said, there's a whole group that's just bowing down to Rupert Murdoch and Roger Ailes. They're so worried about getting primaries and what Rush Limbaugh's going to say about them. They've got this take no prisoners mentality. And by they, I'm assuming you mean a certain branch of the Republican right. Party. Um, this doesn't seem to be very conducive to, toward political What I also said in that is that people that want to legislate, I'm glad to work with. Mm -hmm. But people that are just dogmatic and are, are up there just to give a speech, and to please a small minority of, their, of the voters, which is the situation in a lot of cases, there's no point in dealing with them. But they seem to be now the majority of Republicans. There, I, well, that would be a sad situation if that was the truth. And I, I'm not saying that it, it's not the truth, but there's, things are changing. Ocean says his support mainly comes from individual donors, not from the Democratic establishment like his opponent Salud Carbajal, the Democratic favorite so far in the race. Oceans will continue to campaign to seek his party's nomination in June. Until then, he says he will continue to fight on behalf of students and residents of the 24th District. Daniel Park, Mustang News. Daniel Park will interview the other eight candidates in the following weeks. Hundreds gathered for the annual San Luis Obispo Craft Beer Festival in the Madonna Inn. The event featured more than 30 local beers and food vendors and provided festival goers with live entertainment. Tickets included souvenir, wine tasting, unlimited beer samples, food samples, and access to the live bands. Coming up, Cal Poly's baseball is uh, hosting the University of San Francisco this weekend. See how the Mustangs are preparing for the scheduled rain. 
and basketball finished up their regular season with two crucial away games. Allison Royal has more on that and many other sports coming up next. A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year, one in 195 million. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, one in 68. I'm Jamie McMurray and my niece has autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Maybe he's really focused. Hey, Michael. Michael. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Maybe he's just being a boy. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. We taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver, the strike zone, the net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? Hi, and welcome back to Mustang News. I'm Allison Boyle, and here are the sports you need to know for this week. The men's basketball team is preparing to play a three-game series at home this coming weekend against rival University of San Francisco. These three games will conclude the Mustangs' 12-game home streak. So far, the team has gone 7-2 overall. Unfortunately, with the high chance of rain over the weekend, a doubleheader has been planned for on Friday and for a game on Saturday. Cal Poly is finally on the road next week traveling to Pepperdine on Tuesday. Men's basketball will be finishing up their 2016 regular season this weekend, but with some tough and crucial road game matches ahead. At 10 and 17, the Mustangs will travel down to Orange County and take on the 22 and 8 Anteaters in Irvine. The game will be broadcasted on ESPN 3 at 8.30 p.m. and Cal Poly will finish off their regular season with the away version of the basketball blue-green rivalry against UC Santa Barbara, which will take place in the Thunderdome on Saturday at 4 p.m. Cal Poly is home to an out-of-the-ordinary baseball cheering section after a Cal Poly baseball legend. The Crew Coast Clubhouse is home to alumni, former baseball players, and fans of Cal Poly baseball. They have designed Crew Coast's only seating section above the Cal Poly dugout and can be heard loud and clear until the ninth inning of any game. The members' only section is named after former Cal Poly pitcher Mike Kruko, who is now a commentator for the San Francisco Giants. The group of cheery fans yell at players on the opposing team to get in their heads and entertain the Cal Poly baseball players standing in the dugout. It's all fun and games for everyone involved. The baseball players find the Kruko's members are faithful fans to the baseball program. For season tickets, you can always contact the Cal Poly Ticket Office at 805-866-GO-STANGS. On Saturday, February 27th, roller girls from ages 18 to 60 came together to celebrate the 10 years of roller derby on the Central Coast by playing the game that they love. Ten years ago, Carrie Jones and Heather Cross were looking for an out-of-the-box sport where women could come together while giving back to the community. The two heard about the Texas Roller Girls and decided Slow needed Roller go Girls of its own. The league's slogan is that roller derby is, quote, cheaper than anger management. Huh. About 70 women total are involved in the league. The league is passionate about helping local charities that support women and children in need. They are donating $500 in proceeds from Saturday to the Slow Women's Shelter, whom they have been helping since 2006. And that's all we have for sports today. I'm Allison Royal. Back to David and Giovanni at the desk. Thank you, Allison. 
and find out what technology can help you view the world differently after the break. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. I guess sometimes things just happen. Devastating things. Your whole world changes in an instant. That's what happened to me the day my mother had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. Look at me. Hey. Raymond, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Robert Hernandez, often referred to as the mad scientist of journalism, will be hosting an event on virtual reality this Friday. The event is about immersive storytelling and how virtual reality allows us to, wor uh, to view the world differently. Hernandez will touch on how people are using virtual reality and why some are calling 2016 the year of virtual reality. Hernandez will also explain the Sundance Film Festival and the New York Times are also getting excited about virtual reality and why we should be interested. The event uh, is Friday, March 4th from 10 a.m. to noon in the Baker Science Building, room one, uh, 180, room 107. The event is free and open to the public. That's all the time we have for you today. You can check out mustardnews.com for continuous news coverage. I'm Giovanni Jimenez Garcia. And I'm David Klein. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day. We're going to leave you with some footage from last year's Sorority's Best Dance Crew competition. Thank you for joining us. When I switch lanes, then them doors swing. I'm at the window screaming money in the thing. Call it automatic bang, bang, bang. Call it automatic bang, bang, bang. While we switch lanes, diamonds in my chain. Then around the world, all the know my name. Call it automatic bang, bang, bang. It's that automatic bang, bang, bang. The chucks. I'm in the club with raw, in the ten ratchets tucked Back it up like a U-Haul, when cash is up Spades in my ice bucket, rub back for luck Racks in my car goes, all the most stupid They they see in love with me, stay away from Cupid That Panamera sick, lupus, T. Raw, show them how we do it Thank you.